the Shark Deck. I'm Jenny Mack with your Daily Come News. Really a different set of news stories today, like uh, very atypical for the kind of things I usually do. I didn't stack it that way, but it's not the usual, hey, somebody's got a special kind of thing. We'll see that. I only got three hours sleep. I had to do an airport pickup that went from 1230 to 2 a.m. So I was out till almost 3 a.m. And it's been a minute since I've done that. Late night still on strike, but the late bot, like my lack of sleep, is uh, an idea for a bit and said, I'm sure Johnny Mac's three hour sleep routine is a foolproof recipe for success. If by success you mean snappy comebacks and a general disdain for human interaction, they say Grumpy is the new 40. Three hours of sleep and Johnny Mac is ready to conquer the world with his signature blend of sleep-deprived charm. It's like he's running on fumes and a smidge of bitterness. Jeez, Leadbot, lay off. Greg Gutfeld, he's still doing his show and he referenced the writer's strike recently and said, I have the number one late night show. I also have the only late night show going on right now, so you don't have a choice. The late bot said, yeah, congratulations, you're the only thing on TV. It's like being the last person at a party. You can dance like no one's watching because, well, no one is. <laughs> From The Hollywood Reporter, Russia is cracking down on American late night TV hosts. Listen to this. Jimmy Kimmel, Stephen Colbert, and Seth Meyers permanently banned from Russia, according to a new list of names released by the Russian government. The Russian Foreign Ministry released a list of 500 Americans that are now banned from entering Russia. Boy, I wish there wasn't a strike. Those guys would probably have some good jokes. Did you try the late bot, John? Yes, the late bot did not nail this as a topic. Some of the others, Barack Obama, not allowed. Aaron Burnett from CNN, not allowed. Rachel Maddow and Joe Scarborough, not allowed. Brian Williams, not allowed. Jimmy Fallon, allowed. <laughs> Congrats, Jimmy Fallon. Last year, Russia banned Ben Stiller, Morgan Freeman, and Sean Penn. That sounds like a Karnak joke. From Deadline, Colin Jost was at the Penn America Gala. It was held in the Museum of Natural History. If you've been there, you know the blue whale. Colin called himself a writer and a friend of writers and extremely fortunate to be there that night, surrounded by two things that might not be around much longer, writers and ocean life. This is the first time that a whale is not the most endangered thing in a room. TV writers, as you know, are on strike right now. I have to say, it's very disorienting to spend the afternoon on the picket line and then show up for a museum cocktail hour in a tuxedo. I don't think that happens at a lot of other labor movements. He was there for a dinner to honor Lorne Michaels and some other folks. John Mulaney was there also. Mulaney was a writer on SNL for five years. He introduced Lorne Michaels and thanked Lorne for protecting generations of writers and presenting all viewpoints from the far left to the moderate left. He gave so many writers the chance to have a national network TV audience to speak to the entire country. But every writer that has come through SNL is totally ungrateful, so resentful. I contacted multiple writers for their favorite stories, and the conversations would descend into bitching about a sketch that Lorne cut 43 years ago. And then Lorne Michaels talked about the infinite monkey theorem. You know, if you locked a bunch of monkeys in a room with typewriters, sooner or later they would write Hamlet. Lauren said, Americans have a soft spot for monkeys. They're funny and you don't really know what they're going to do. And sometimes they throw feces and added even Shakespeare knew you needed laughs to keep them room. Meanwhile, from Deadline, some of these striking late night comedy writers have launched a YouTube show. I checked one of these out and, uh, you know, it's as good as me telling jokes written by the AI, you know, and I'm not saying that that's that good. They're putting together a weekly YouTube channel show. Sometimes it's called Picket Tonight, and sometimes it's called The Jokes You Love from the Picket Signs, but we're saying them out loud. Greg Iwinski is a former writer for Colbert and John Oliver. He co-hosted the first episode alongside Sasha Stewart. She's a former writer for The Nightly Show on Larry Wilmore. Neither of them struck me as natural performers, and Greg said, whatever it's called, this is where two striking WGA writers sit at a desk and tell you jokes. He said, as you may know, writers are on strike. What you might not know is that according to nine out of 10 doctors, if a late night writer doesn't do monologue jokes for too many consecutive days, they die. All right, I'm going to do a test here on the fly. I am opening up chat GPT, which is what I use for the late bot. And I'm going to ask it to spit out variants on that joke. OK, let's see what happens here. All right. I think the AI did better, which is a reason the writer should be concerned. Latebot said, what you might not know is that according to 9 out of 10 doctors, if a late night writer doesn't do monologue jokes for too many consecutive days, they develop a condition known as punchline withdrawal syndrome. Symptoms include excessive pun usage, spontaneous outbursts of laughter at awkward moments, and a strong urge to roast random strangers on the street. That's a better joke if told by a proper comedian, which I am not. That's a better joke. Another one from the late bot. Here's a fun fact. According to 9 out of 10 doctors, if a late night writer doesn't do monologue jokes for too many consecutive days... Their funny bone starts to disintegrate. See, I could see Kimmel nailing that joke. Anyway, back to the YouTube thing, which is called Picket Tonight. 
Greg Winsky said, we'll bring you jokes and sketches whenever we can, and you'll get to hear from writers inside the strike what we're fighting for and why the studios need to talk to us. Stewart said, we're two of the many writers who'll be reading these strike propaganda jokes. If you're like, I want to watch someone more attractive, just wait a week. That's funny. Some more jokes from the writers. A 10-foot gator is found in a Florida couple's backyard. Not found? The couple. Very good. Very, very good joke. More late night stuff. Charlemagne the Gods show on Comedy Central called Hell of a Week. Comedy Central, not continuing production, they say. We thank Charlemagne and the amazing team behind the show for its impactful conversations and the incredible collaboration as we look ahead to our future partnership with Charlemagne. Switching topics here. I told you on Sunday about the comedian who got in trouble for making a joke about the Chinese army. There are a lot of articles right now about comedians being censored in China. Here's another one. Nigel Eng, he uses the stage name Uncle Roger. I think I've mentioned him in the past. He posted a video clip last Thursday for an upcoming comedy special in which he pokes fun at Chinese surveillance. He's interacting with someone in the audience. Uh, The audience member says they're from a city in the south of China. And Uncle Roger says, good country, good country. We have to say that now, correct? All the phones are listening. His Chinese social media account has now been suspended. Interesting. I remember the comedian last week, Chrissy Mayer. She made some jokes about Dylan Mulvaney. I feel like Chrissy is in a bit of hey, look at me mode. I saw another story about her, something, something, an airline giving her trouble. And I saw that story and I'm like, hmm, I feel like you're on an attention campaign. I also notice her hanging around a lot of the bigger YouTubers that talk about like science fiction shows. I'm a fan of several of those. And she's been making the rounds there. So not quite sure what Chrissy's up to right now. But the Daily Mail checked out an interview that Chrissy did with Fox News. Chrissy said, you should be laughing at things at a comedy club that might get you in trouble at work. You should be making snide comments to your buddies at a comedy club that could get you in trouble at work. It's one of the last few places of freedom where you can be yourself and let loose. She said, trans are like the protected class de jour. People feel very entitled. You can just say you're non-binary and whoop, you have just as much entitlement as a full-blown trans person. She says one of the reasons her clip went viral is because it lampoons the idea that anyone can join this victim group. Chrissy says, then you can't criticize anything they ever said. Not only can you not criticize them, you can't even joke about them in a comedy club. She was asked what her next course of action will be, and she said, there's nothing to update here. All human beings should be constantly learning, growing, and trying to see somebody else's opinion. Hi, my name is TJ, and I host a daily radio show. I have a bunch of friends that join me for it every day, and believe it or not, we all still see hope in humanity. Are you one of these people, too? We want to hang out with you. Just search for The TJ Show on your favorite podcasting platform or join us at thetjshow.com. We would love to have you being hopeful about humanity with us. Here's a quick sample of what the show sounds like. Hey, welcome to The TJ Show. As you can tell, you need to hear more of it. Search for The TJ Show, and we can't wait to meet you. Hey, one way you can support the show is go to buymeacoffee.com slash dailycomedynews. And boy, thank you, listeners. I'm on my second large iced coffee with caramel and milk of the day. Nope, sorry. I just did a Brian Williams thing there and I conflated things. I'm on my second large iced coffee. The first one was butter pecan and milk. This one is caramel and milk. See, the brain can trick you sometimes. Anyway, Kara Wood, you know Kara. She's got the book, The Power of the Streak, and she's got the Substack Knock It Off. Let's see what she's up to today. The new one is called Why I Chose to Pressure Wash on Mother's Day. You know what? I also recently pressure washed, not on Mother's Day, but near Mother's Day. Why? So I'm trying to stay in good graces. Anyway, I digress. Kara bought me several coffees. Thank you so much. So did Becky. Becky bought me four and recommended a breakfast place in Chicago because she knew I snuck out there over the weekend. Becky, thank you very much. If you'd like to support the show, go to buymeacoffee.com slash news. And don't forget, everybody, if in one of these months we hit the $100 mark, then I will do an entire episode where I only say good things about Adam Sandler. Can you imagine? Maybe we'll get there one of these months. Laugh Button says Gas Digital is going to record and release six new half-hour comedy specials. These will go up on YouTube. The comedians Rich Voss, Kurt Metzger, Louis Gomez, Dave Smith, Colin Tyrell, and Jordan Jensen. You want to go to a taping? Okay, you can do that. Actually, you can't. I just went to the website to confirm the name of the theater, which is The Cutting Room, but I see here they're all sold out. Oh, well, I tried. I mean, I recorded the story as soon as I saw it. Ah, taping is July 10th through the 12th, but... You're not going. <laughs> They're doing two a night. Kurt Metzger and Jordan Jensen on the 10th. Dave and Louie on the 11th. Colm and Rich Voss on the 12th. Cameron Esposito. 
She's Fantastic has a new podcast. On this one, Survive or Die Trying, Cameron will provide real advice on how to survive anything and everything life can throw at you, from giant bear attacks to the zombie apocalypse to being stranded on a deserted island or meeting your in-laws. She says, Survive or Die Trying is a podcast for anyone who has mentally walked through life's scariest situations like the zombie apocalypse. Or actually survive the more mundane but equally bananas, like that one breakup in high school where you almost got her name tattooed on your forehead after the fact. My guests and I are not survival experts, but we'll learn together how to prepare for the absolute worst case scenarios. I miss her old podcast, which she used to record at a comedy club. It was a great way for me, selfishly, to keep an eye on some quote-unquote up-and-comers, especially they were usually L.A.-based comedians. I'm trying to Google it for you now because I can't remember what it was called. Is it gone? I know it's been over for several years, but I can't find it. Let me try on the Apple Podcast app. Ah, here it is. Put your hands together, it was called. Very, very funny show. Last episode was back in 2019, but when the show used to be fresh, you'd get sets and backstage interviews from comedians in front of a live UCB audience. Definitely worth going back through the archives. A lot of great comedians on there. Put your hands together, that one is called. And I'm going to leave you with a spoiler for Fast X, Fast and the Furious 10. If you don't want that movie to be spoiled, why don't you check out here? I'll babble for a second so you can pull your phone out of your pocket and hit stop. This will be the final story for the day. Okay, are they gone? The people that didn't see Fast X yet? Hey, did you see the cameo in Fast X? Pete Davidson played Bowie. I didn't know that was going to happen. I was pleasantly surprised by that and all the other cameos. I had done a pretty good job of avoiding spoilers for Fast X. I loved Fast X. By the way, I am the biggest fan of the Fast and Furious franchise, all the way back to number one. Back when we used to have Blockbuster Video, I rented that one night, and I was just like, oh my goodness, this movie's so much fun, and it looks cool, and the soundtrack is great, so I've been a fan all along. I know a lot of people jumped on when The Rock jumped on, but me, OG Fast and the Furious fan. Fast 10? Fantastic. Fun. Turn your brain off. Don't worry about physics. There's a lot of uh, questionable physics in there. Not sure you can just jump from car to car without falling behind and getting run over, or Dom Toretto will jump a car into a crane and smash 200 feet and his airbags don't even deploy but don't worry about the physics it's just a fun fun movie jason momoa killed it anyway pete davidson is a comedian which is why i'm talking about fast x he played a character referred to as bowie and uh, the internet points out pete davidson's character not killed off which means we could have pete and fast 11 why not and that's your comedy news for today follow the show for free on apple podcast spotify if you're on youtube Smash that subscribe button, as the kids say. Like and subscribe, or whatever you're supposed to do. Smash, you're supposed to hit the bell. I don't know, the kids know what to do. You're on YouTube, you're doing it, do it. See you tomorrow. Can I interest you in some meatballs made out of mammoth meat? No? All right, hi, I'm Johnny Mack, host of Five Good News Stories. It's a twice a week podcast where I share some upbeat stories like the dog who only will respond to commands if you use an Irish brogue. Or what about the guy who's filling potholes with noodles? Or the woman who, congratulations, she passed her driver's license. Oh, by the way, it was her 960th try. You you heard me correctly. It's five good news stories. Nice, easy way to start your morning. Five good news stories. The number five good news stories wherever you get your podcasts.